Good morning, rise and shine, 209, day 209. And I'm headed off to an early morning doctor's appointment. Love those annual physicals. So I'm gonna keep it pretty short today. And Jesus in chapter 12 of Mark uses a really, I, I think a fairly easy to understand parable. Um, and when he's talking to the religious leaders, and the teachers like he's speaking plain enough that they get it and it makes them mad <laughs> he talks about the concept of ownership and a somebody who has a vineyard and a piece of land who even puts a wall around it and and does all of these things um has a grape press all of the things but he needs to go away so he hires some tenant farmers, some tenants, to take care of it while he's gone. And because he is the owner of it, and they are not, he sends, um, you know, some of his representatives to collect, you know, on some of the profits and some of the, um, you know, collect the rent. Let's just put it in modern terms. Like, and rent also has a, um, usually has a, a profit, a little bit of a profit margin for a landlord when you talk about property ownership. Um, because ultimately, he's still responsible for the property and he needs that investment. He needs the property to be taken care of and he needs some reserve funds also to repair any damage. You know, it's just, and it's just the right, th you know, it's the right relationship to have. You expect payment for the privilege to live on somebody else's property. <clears throat> so it's a, it's a benefit. Those that can't afford ownership uh, can, still have places to live and work. Um, but you've got to give the owner their due. They don't, they're not um, <clears throat> required or uh, not searching for the right word. Um, I'm not finding the right word. I'm searching. I'm not finding. <laughs> um, there's no obligation to provide free housing, free whatever to anybody it's a uh you know it's a i own this you're gonna represent that you understand that i own it you don't own it you're gonna promise to take care of it you're gonna pay me like and we have this relationship with uh with ourselves and the earth <laughs> we kind of forget so he he tells this story of Keep, that he keeps sending the representatives and every time they come and the, he's referring to the prophets in the Old Testament um, they get uh, beaten up and they say we're not going to give you anything who do you think you are we work this land this is ours they try to kind of take ownership and they don't respect the relationship and they forget that it's really not their their land they don't own it so they're getting a little bit out of order and they are, yeah. So the property owner finally sends his beloved son thinking, okay, well, if they don't respect all of these other people, surely they'll respect my son. Nope. They want to beat him up and th kill him too. <laughs> and so then he says, well, you know what? When they do that, then I'm going to go and look for other farmers. So this is the telling us that he is going to open it up beyond. So right now he had this covenant relationship, this walled relationship on this property with a certain, certain farmers. Like he kept giving them chance after chance after chance. He said, you know what? I can't trust you all anymore. You won't even respect my son. So I'm gonna open, I'm gonna get some new, new tenant farmers in. So this is the foreshadowing of Jesus um, dying for all of us, the Gentiles, everybody. He's for everybody now. He goes from being just for the Jews to everybody. 
and shows us how to live, how to get it done. But we need to remember, we are not the owners. We, this thing we call life on earth, this these bodies that we have, the beautiful um, land that we live in, it's not ours. It's ours for a time. And we are to respect it, take care of it, pay our rent, pay our dues. And within the structure of God's economy, that doesn't mean money. Yes, sometimes we are supposed to represent our tithing with money because it's an act of faith. But that's not what he wants. He wants us to love each other. And in chapter 12, he's talking about all of this as the different examples go on. Um, the religious leaders, oh, they're so mad after this whole example. And then they come and try to trick him again, going, well, what about taxes? And he says, oh, show me a gold coin. And it's a picture of Caesar on there. Well, he said, well, don't try to trick me. Give Caesar undo Caesar what is Caesar's. And give God unto God what is God's. So, nice try, teachers of the law. And then, um, it just keeps going. And they're all kind of related. There's another example where one of the teachers of the law um, was watching him. And he was like, they actually give us a clue. This is a pretty cool here. Where up until now... When, when we hear, see the word Pharisee or teacher of the law, it's like, oh, they're all bad. Well, here we get an exception. There's a teacher of the law who's like, wow, I think he's saying a lot of truth here. Like, I'm resonating with this Jesus guy. But because I'm not so sure, let me test him too. So he talks about what is the most important um, of the commandments in the law. And Jesus says, Love God with your whole heart, your whole soul, your whole mind, uh, your your whole heart, and love your neighbor as yourself. And he says, ding, 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 you're right. I, that is, yeah, I understand it that way too. And Jesus says, this man is close to the kingdom of God. He gets it. So even the teacher of the law is not, they have, they have the chance. They have the free will. They have the choice to see the truth. Um, they're not all necessarily hard-hearted. And we don't have to be either. We can humble ourselves and go, wow, I." some of us get caught up in all the rules. We're doing all of the rules and we're missing the heart of the matter. And that's what this uh, particular re religious teacher says. He goes, and this rule is more important than all the burnt offerings that are required by the law. And that's when Jesus is, ding, 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 you've got it. So God's economy is different than our economy. And whether you believe in the God of the Bible, like nature and nature's law, you know, uh, gives us clues to the natural order of things. We have a limited lifespan and this earth and people like we all come and go and we don't get to take our houses with us. We don't get to take our possessions with us. And a lot of us, when we're living this life, we kind of forget that. We cling and we build and we amass and we guard and we protect. And and then we make that our Lord. And you hear it from the dying all the time, no matter what their religious persuasion is. And their, a lot of their last wishes or advice to the rest of us is relationships are all that matter. Love is all that matters. None of it matters when you're on your deathbed and at the end of your life, when you look back, everybody wishes they had done it differently. And we get this message all the time, all the time. And we hear it in the Bible and yet we're so hard hearted. We get so caught up. We get so caught up in our lives and we own our lives and we need to own our stuff and blah, blah, blah. And we, we cling and hold to it so tightly. And then something, life comes along and knocks you sideways. 
uh, maybe you get sick, somebody you love gets sick, um, you know, life, somebody's life gets taken away, and then it ta that's like your wake-up call. Oh, wow, okay, maybe things are about more than this. But a lot of us, even when that happens, it makes us cling more. It makes us, or we wake up for a minute and then we fall right back asleep thinking that we're like the tenant farmers and that really it's our property when it's not. And we start acting like bullies um, to people that get it. <laughs> um, and even with God sending us messengers and coming and we're like, no, get out of here. It's mine. It's mine. It's all mine. Meanwhile, you didn't pay for that land. <laughs> and, but because we do have property ownership here on earth, um, you know, it's hard, but again, it's temporary. I deal in the world of real estate every day and you don't get to take it with you. You do get to pass it on, but you don't know, you don't know if people are going to take care of it or what's going to happen to it. You can do all the stuff. My husband and I were even talking about wills yesterday, but when we're gone, like it's gone, you know, we're, does it really matter at the end of the day? We want to be responsible stewards. We want to take care of it and just remember the whole ownership of everything. That doesn't mean that we don't take care of it. As a matter of fact, it's the opposite. It means we take such good care of it because we know there's more than just this and there's more to it than our individual little human lives. We're playing a part of a collective and, and when we stop and remember that through prayer, through tithing, through showing love to our fellow humans, um, we're, we're, you know, we're saying, Lord, yes, I, let me take care of this. I don't know if I put this in good terms today and I know I'm a little, you know, kind of pressed for time and pulled in a few different directions myself, but um, hopefully that is helpful in some way. I know every time, every morning when I go through this process, I, it helps me understand it better <laughs> to be able to share it and say something out of it. So, and if it lands on somebody, <laughs> and it helps them and helps their understanding or even encourages them to go look and get their own individual message. Um, yeah, that's all I can hope for. This is maybe my little way as a tenant farmer, a responsible tenant farmer to um, show my respect and my proper understanding of how I think this all works and that I am not the owner I am just somebody here that's doing my best to try to take care of it and try to start living from a better perspective. I think I was one of those tenant farmers that was like, get out of here, go away, it's all mine. And now I've seen the light. I'm the teacher that now, you know, the reformed religious teacher that now is finally getting it and trying to humble herself. And by the way, I've never been a religious teacher, so, and I don't want to be one. <laughs> Um, but somebody who is, was trying to be a law follower and to now trying to understand the heart. Um, so anyway, rise and shine and have a great day. Bye.